2019 has been a year of continued progress in our financial goals and continued progress in our key strategic priorities. We disposed of the Crafts North America business in early 2019, and with that, Coates today is a pure 100% B2B industrial world leader. We have also acquired Far Yarns, which is in line with our strategy for performance materials, where we said we would build scale in two or three end sectors. With Far, we get the ability to scale up in the personal protection sector. In an environment where the external headwinds are strong, there's a lot of uncertainty and volatility, Coates is very good at controlling the controllables, and there's a lot of focus on the self-help programs. I'm pleased to report that we completed our two-year transformation program called Connecting for Growth. That has delivered significant savings. It has uh, reoriented the company to be fitter, faster, and a lot more agile. Sustainability, again, is a key part of our agenda for not only 2019, but certainly beyond that. We released our sustainability strategy last year. And along with that, we set up very ambitious goals that we need to deliver by 2022. I'm pleased to report that in 2019, we have set up strong foundations that will set us on a glide path to deliver the, the targets for 2022. Last but not the least, we have a very strong balance sheet. This is going to allow us to reinvest funds in very attractive organic and acquisition opportunities in the future. The financial highlights were the 1% sales growth, which was across both apparel and footwear and performance materials, the 6% growth in operating profit, and the 11% growth in cash flow, so strong cash flow. And overall, we had an 11% increase in our dividend per share, which reflects the board's confidence in the future of the business. So we have two operating segments, apparel and footwear, about 75% of the business, and performance materials, about 25%. In apparel and footwear, we've seen good growth in operating profit there of 9% as we've had sales growth and a number of initiatives to drive the margin. In performance materials, the smaller business, we see more variability in terms of the performance there. And as a result of the lower sales growth and the initial costs of setting up our three innovation hubs, we saw a decline year on year of 6% in operating profit. So overall, the group grew by 1%, but we saw differences within particular regions. In Asia, we saw 3% growth, with strong growth in our core apparel and footwear markets, particularly outside China. Within America, we saw a decline of 5%, particularly driven by some tough trading conditions for our Latin American crafts business, albeit an improved in performance in the second half. And finally, within EMEA, we saw growth of 4%, driven across both growth in apparel and footwear, and also on the performance materials side, where telecoms and energy uh, had good growth, albeit slightly slower in the second half than the first half. The organic operating profit growth of 6% was driven by pricing, productivity and procurement benefits, along with a tight control of costs and the final year benefits of our Connecting for Growth program, which contributed $13 million. These benefits were partially offset by some of the structural inflation that we face in a number of markets, particularly on raw materials and energy. But these overall factors drove a 60 basis point improvement in organic operating at margins to a very healthy 14.3%. Innovation is absolutely key to our long-term success. We have now opened three innovation hubs, one in the US, one in Turkey, and the other in China. The focus of these innovation hubs is to look at bigger and faster innovation that will help solve uh, problems with our customers. Uh, I am pleased to report that these innovation hubs are attracting a lot of attention from the industry. We have had 180 customer visits last year. 
Uh, these innovation hubs have delivered an incremental $16 million of sales, and this is $16 million of new products launched in 2019, delivering a 2019 uh, sales impact. I'm also pleased to report that in 2019, we had about $121 million of sales that came from products that were launched in the last five years. For me, innovation is absolutely key to one of our strategic elements, which is going beyond this, the stitch line, and we are off to a good start. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is changing the image of coats, and I think these are symbols of modern coats going forward. Sustainability is absolutely key to our customers. There is a growing pressure from consumers to use less natural resources. Our customers are more and more incentivized to design and develop products that come from recycled material that use a lot less resources. This is absolutely aligned with what we have been trying to do in Coats and what we intend to do going forward. For investors, sustainability usually means lower risk and higher returns. And um, there is a growing realization within the investor community that it is possible to achieve lower risk and higher returns both at the same time by investing in companies that have got a strong mindset and a strong culture of delivery in this area. And Coates is absolutely a company that has been doing this for the last two and a half centuries. Acquisitions is absolutely core to our strategy. In the last four and a half years, we have made six acquisitions. We have invested about $120 million in buying these six companies. They deliver a cumulative $200 million of sales and $15 million of EBIT. We will continue to look at acquisitions in the two or three sectors of performance materials, software solutions, and any other category which will help us enhance our value proposition with customers. Coats remains well-placed to execute our strategy and deliver another year of growth in 2020.